Welcome to our fourth advanced tip video. One thing you'll come to notice in your time with WarioWare DIY is that there are a lot of objects used in games that aren't ever visible to the player. There are a lot of reasons for creating invisible objects, but in this video, we're going to look at how they can be used for detecting hits. You'll see what I mean once you see an example. Here we have Gold Digger. This is an old WarioWare classic, back again as a playable game in DIY. As you can see, I'm simply trying to get the finger in the nose. The interesting thing to show here is how the nose reacts to being hit by the finger. Let's take a look at our objects and I'll show you what's up. So notice this nose object. It has three sets of art, one for each possible type of nose collision, left, center, and right. This nose is a single object though, and we want it to react appropriately depending on where the finger bumps into it. So how do we determine which version of the nose to display? Well, if we look closely on the game screen, you'll see three little objects on the bottom of the nose with switches turned off. Now watch what happens when I make the finger collide with the left side of the nose. Its switch turns on. That there is a hit detector, and we have three of them for the left, middle, and right parts of the nose. The nose monitors these switches and changes its art accordingly. So the really cool thing is that I only need to have one nose object. I don't need to combine three separate objects to make a nose. I just place little hit detectors in key locations and then use their switches to make the nose behave appropriately. I also have the flexibility to change the size or location of the hit detectors to balance gameplay. Remember that an object does have to have at least one pixel to detect hits. Just make sure it blends into the background. Okay, next I want to look at another cool, maybe less obvious use for hit detectors. This is a little tech demo I put together using some Mario assets. I want to use this demonstration to show how hit detectors can help create random, unpredictable enemy behavior. Notice the little box here. This appears in a random location just off the ground, and when Mario runs into it, the bouncing ball turns into a deadly beast. Now, it's okay to use temporary graphics like this when you're in the prototyping stage. Now, I want you to also notice that as soon as I run into the hit detector, it jumps to another random location. This randomness can add suspense and added depth to the gameplay. So the point of this little demo is to show that we don't have to place hit detectors on the enemy. You can place them in different positions around it to dictate its behavior. That concludes our fourth advanced tip video. We've seen how useful invisible hit detectors can be as programming tools in our games. And it's just one example of how versatile our objects are. You have up to 15 objects per game, and that's a lot of resources for adding flexibility and sophistication to your micro games. I hope you can find your own ways to take advantage of these resources. And remember, you can enter your games into design challenges through the distribution center. We look forward to seeing your creations.